Romans 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? What shall we say then? What shall we say then? Yeah. Shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound. God forbid. God forbid. How shall we do? Stop there. The question I gave was the meaning of what is God forbid? What is the implication of that phrase, God forbid? Now, if you read this kind of scripture, what shall we say then? Shall we continue saying that grace may abound? How can we who are dead to sin live again anymore in them? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So when Paul said, God forbid, what was he referring to? If you continue in sin, what will God do? This subject is always very, very dangerous. That if you are not matured, you cannot be taught. Very, very dangerous. If you look at the beginning of Romans chapter 1, Paul began to talk about the gospel being the power of God unto salvation to them that believe. So he began to talk about the gospel, the good news, and then talking about the work of the cross, talking about how that man enters in and the glory faded, and then how that the wages of sin is dead and all that. And he went on and began to talk about how God you know, brought Jesus Christ and he gave the example of, of Abraham who believed God and they credited righteousness into his account. Yes, in Romans chapter 4, he began to talk about if God, if Abraham in his own day got righteousness not by work but by faith. Now, we he were try, trying to bring in how righteousness can be credited to our account without work. So in chapter 5, where Paul settled on the grace of God. Chapter 5 of Romans. If you read it, you will know that you are totally saved by grace alone. Mm. Grace alone. That if you did not lift a finger to do anything that was righteous, the fact that you believe in God, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary, you are saved. If you read chapter 5 of Romans, it says, righteousness was credited to your account with the abundance of grace that it carries. Now, watch it, watch it. The death, I mean, the, the obedience, sorry, the sin of one man, Adam, Brought death naturally unto everybody. Is it not true? Yes, sir. The obedience of one man brought life. Naturally. How? Naturally. But didn't you see the difference? The difference is that you didn't believe in what Adam did before you died. Yes. You died naturally with it. But when Christ came and brought light, you have to believe in it in order to be counted into light. Adam disobeyed. You know there are these, these two Adams. The first Adam, the last Adam. The first Adam is the one that came in the flesh. The last Adam, Jesus Christ, came in the spirit. Now, the first Adam The first Adam disobeyed. Because of his disobedience, death came unto all. Without you doing anything, you are dead. Born dead. That child that was born today, born 
dead. You see now. The child has not done anything. In fact, the child is in the womb. Dead. So when you give back to the child, dead already. Because Adam, Adam, the first Adam, died. This death passed on all people. Same way. Jesus Christ, one man's obedience, the second, the last Adam. This one man's obedience. Life should, you know, go to all men. Actually, he paid for the sins of all men, including Abacha. <laughs> All men. All men. Idol worshippers, Muslims. The Habalis. Muslim. All men. Ritualists. Kidnappers. He paid for all men. There is nothing God is expecting any man to do except to believe. This is the work that you must do. Believe in the one who he has sent. Period. Only believe. That is the message of Billy Graham all the years of his evangelism. Only believe. So if you read verse chapter 5 of Romans and you run away with it, you will go on sinning. Go on sinning. Freely. Freely, publicly, and talk about it publicly. You become a list in the kingdom. <laughs> you are hearing me well. <laughs> publicly. It does not matter what I do. Grace has covered me. And you will be teaching people. Grace has covered me. And you see that move all around. It is taking chapter 5 of Romans to the extreme mm. Mm. without reading chapter 6 verse 1 of Romans. When he said, can I ask you a question that is dangerous? You are on top, on top of a woman that is not your wife, God forbid, and you are born again, spirit filled, tongue talking. Believing in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and all of that. And on that day, on top of the woman, the trumpet sounded. Oh, will you, be, will you rapture? Born again, very born again, and you believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ? You believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ? You believe in everything? You believe and you are talk, talking, born again, and expecting the rapture, or expecting the, the coming of Jesus Christ? You are. You are 100% fake connected with God. But on this day, you are in, a, in an adulterous situation. God forbid. Now, while the earth was going on, the rapture sounded. The trumpet sounded. Will you go with the rapture? When they said he's going to come as a thief in the night, when you least expect him, that is when he will come. Have you not heard the gospel? Have you not heard the teaching yes. before? Have you not heard the teaching? Left behind. Left behind. Oh no, had I know, had I know. Oh no, the sinner's voice we hear. Gone, gone, they have gone, they have gone. Marching to meet us, glory and no, no, had I know. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, no. The sinner's voice we hear. Gone, gone, they have gone, they have gone. Marching to meet the glory above. No, no, had I know. Is your name in the book of life? Yeah. It's your name in the book of life. Of life. So all they are trying to say is, all they are trying to say is, if you have kept 
righteousness up to the dying minute and you are caught in iniquity. Heaven is going. Hell straight. Hell. Hell. So much so, he said that you will hear the voice of Christians who were born again crying in hell. Had I know why? Because the last day the trumpet sounded, I was caught in sin. And so they were crying in, the, in hell. So in hell you see people crying and wishing, oh yeah, I know. I wouldn't have gone to that sin at all. But shut up. That is humanistic gospel. That is not that is not God's word at all. Because you that thought you were righteous. By the time we put you on a scale, mm. you were found wanting. Mm. The only reason why you made it was grace. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Why did Paul says, God forbid, for us to continue? Sir? This is not about heaven. And it's not about salvation. You are saved. Saved. Saved by grace. In Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, verse to verse 9, or to verse 10, to verse 10. But actually, verse 8 and 9. Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through By grace you are saved through what? Faith. 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 And that not of yourself. That is not of anything you did. It is the gift of God. It's a gift. Not of works. Not, so that I can explain. Not of works so that nobody can boast and say I got here because I was righteous. Not of work. Can you read another version for me? Does anybody have another version? Six and Ephesians 2. Eight. Two, eight, and nine. Two, eight, and nine. Does anybody have another version? By grace, yes. you have been saved through faith. Mm. And this is not your own doing. This is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. It's a gift that came from God. Yes. What version is that? NIV. NIV. By true faith. And this is not from yourself. No. It is the gift of God. This is not from yourself in the gate of God. Read verse 9. Not by works. Not by works. So that no one can boast. The reason why it is not by work is so that no one can boast. There's no boasting in heaven. All right. Let, let me read this one. Message. There's no boasting in heaven. Message. Message. How do you find it stable? Yes. Saving is all his idea. And all his works. All we do is trusting in God. All do we do is trusting him enough to let him do it. It is God's gift from start to finish. It is God's gift from start to what? Finish. God finish. plays the major right. role. God plays a major role. We, if we did, yes, we probably. Go no, we don't play. Bragging. We don't play the major role. If we if did, we, did, we, we will probably, probably will go around, go around bragging, bragging that we have done the whole thing. And we have done the whole thing. No, no. We never make. No, save ourselves. You did not make or you save yourself. God does both the making and saving. Stop. Yeah? God does both the making and saving. Yes. God does both the making and the God saving. God does, he does both the making and, and the saving. Mm. So you didn't have any contribution to it. Mm. Say, I don't do anything evil. I don't do me. I don't do anything evil. I don't even touch any. I don't. I don't. I. I am always very. No, you didn't contribute anything to it. Are you hearing me? You didn't contribute anything to it. Yes, ma'am. What you just said now? Oh, what about uh, the said he had um, a brother that was the conk Muslim. Yes. Conk Afar. But, you know, he was, he 
and accepted. He accepted. And he died. And he said he prayed to God that God should reveal to him if his brother actually made him. And he said God revealed to him. And he knew he was happy. It happened, to my, it happened to my wife too. It happened to my wife too. My mother was a Muslim. At the dying bed, they preached to her. She accepted Jesus as her Lord and Savior before she died. She confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior. But why is it difficult for people to accept grace? I mean, you accept that is human teaching. What we over the years have oh, become a now very <laughs> now why did we introduce this God forbid? That's why that's the question now. By grace, I'm prepared for you. Yes. It is by grace. God's remarkable compassion. God's remarkable favor. compassion and favor. That, okay. that you have been saved. And I'll be saved. Actually deliver from judgment and given eternal life. Deliver from Through judgment it. and given eternal life. Yes. And this salvation is not this salvation is not of yourself. It's not of yourself. Not through your own effort. Not through your own efforts. The own desire. The own desire. Gracious gift of God. On the side. Do you understand this? Yes, sir. Now, why can't I continue in sin if I have this? grace. Paul said, the reason why I can't continue his sin is because God wants to use me to correct what is going on in the society. Do you hear it? God wants to use me to correct what is going on in society. How can I tell you to stop stealing when I'm still stealing? How can I tell you to stop lying when I'm still lying? How can I stop to tell you to stop, you know, immorality when I'm still immoral? So now, I can't stop you if you see those things in my life. The very day you see them in my life, that's when you, the day you cut off from coming. I, did, I thought it was, uh, I see, everything is light, Joe. Everything is light. Now, look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. You understand this very clearly. Verse 19, actually 19 to 21. Nevertheless, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 2 19. Nevertheless, the ne- foundation of God stands sure. The foundation of God stands sure. Having this seal. It has this seal. The, the Lord seal. Them that are his. God already knows those who are His. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ. Now, everyone that names the name of Christ that they are calling you Christian depart from iniquity. Depart from iniquity. Why? That's what we are going to answer now. But in great, but in a great house. In a great house. There are not only vessels of gold. We don't have only vessels of gold. And of silver. We also have vessels of silver. But also of wood. We have vessels of wood. And of earth. We have vessels of earth. And some to honor. Well, some of these vessels are unto honor. And some to dishonor. Some of these vessels are unto dishonor. Even man there. Wait a minute. In. The great house, we have all these vessels. They are in the house. Where are they? In the house. Where are they? In the house. Do you understand that? Some of them are to honor. Some of them are to dishonor. Where are they? In the the house. house. Is anyone outside? No, sir. Even those who are that unto dishonor, are they inside? Yes, sir. Yes. You get it? Yes, sir. So we have those who are unto honor, and those who are unto dishonor. How do we know the difference? Read it on. If a man if therefore, a man himself, therefore 
purge himself from these, from these iniquities. Shall be a vessel unto honor. This man will be a vessel unto honor. Sanctify. Sanctify me, set apart. And meet for the master's use. Suitable. The word meet means suitable for the master's use. And prepared unto every good work. Two of you come out, um, Sam, and you. Stand up. A1. A1. Sam. Come on. Come on. I'm not using you as an example for any evil. Okay? I'm just using an example. These are two people, both of them born again. My children, both of them are my children. Born again in the same house. One to honor, one to dishonor. dishonor. They're in the same house. Are yeah, you understanding me? Yes, sir. Now, the reason why this man is on to honor is not because it is good. He's good. Bless you. It's not because he's... Are you listening to me? Yes. It's not because he's good. He has cleansed himself. Now, if I, if, I, if I serve you, if I serve you a very powerful jollof rice with good goat meat on top of it, you see, on top of it, well prepared, and that thing, I serve it in a gold plate full of shit, bear, the gold, beautiful gold, Full of human shit. Oh my. And I serve the fine food inside it and I serve you to eat. Will you eat it? Because the gold is not poached, I can't use it to serve. So now, in this house, we have people that are gold, we have people that are silver, we have people that are wood, we have people that are clay. They are in my house. All of them are in my house. Don't forget it. They are all in my house. There are those who want to honor, there are those who want to dishonor. This man has cleansed himself. Very clean. Come. I set him apart. This man is still struggling with cleaning himself. I set him this way. So anytime I am looking for who to send a message to preach to my people, I send him I send him because I know he will be acceptable before them. If I send this one, they will not accept him because the same thing he asked them to stop is what he is doing. Do you understand it? Yes, so I can't send this man. But are they in my house? Yes, sir. If I rapture happen, will they follow me? Yes, sir. So what are we talking about? So. Should we continue in saying, God forbid? Why? Because I need them to go do this work. The reason why I forbid your sins is it's not because you are going to be with me or not going to be with me. As for being with me, you are my children. It's guaranteed. As long as you believe in the Jesus Christ and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and all that, you are with me. But should we continue to say, no, sir? God forbid. God forbid. No, sir. Why? Because I want to use you. Mm. When you point yourself from these things, I will set you apart like this. Yes. You become fit, meat, fit, suitable for my use. It's about use. It's not about heaven. It's not about rapture. If rapture happens, he will go, he will go. Because their salvation is by grace. But their usefulness in my house is by their Cleansing. cleansing. Sir, what about all these dormant believers? Like we have some Muslims that don't believe in Christ. They don't believe in Christ. Who, who believe in Christ? There's some Muslims that believe in They don't believe in Christ. The yeah. Bible says Satan also believes. They don't believe in Christ. They believe in him as being a prophet. Yes. They believe in him that he's coming back again. They believe in so and so so. But they don't believe in him being the way for salvation. Because the belief have to be qualified. The belief will be qualified. Because how do I know you believe? It's by your action. Faith is 
visible. Faith is what? Visible. Jesus Christ said, when they removed the roof and brought that man, the Bible say, when Jesus saw their faith, ah, which means faith is visible. The actions they put up shows that let's get this guy to the feet of Jesus. Whenever it will take us, the place is still packed. Everywhere is filled. Let's find anywhere, anyhow. Let's get to the feet of Jesus. When Jesus saw their feet, the action you put to it <coughs> tells us you believe. How can you say I believe? And then you, you are not doing anything about it. <coughs> yeah. Now, that is why the Bible says, are you listening to me? Yes, sir. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached thank you this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness to all nations then shall the end come and the question is what's the gospel of the kingdom come you will have money that's not gospel come God will heal you that's not gospel come you have promotion in your place of work as not gospel. So if you came for all that, you came for the general thing, you go you take it and go to hell. You go to hell with all that. Now ask a typical Anglican person, Catholic person, and all that, what do you believe? What is your faith? What is your faith? He said, I believe in Jesus Christ. How? If they can't understand it, the, the dynamics of salvation. That's why you have to explain it. Salvation, you have to explain it. That all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And because all have sinned, the wages of sin is what? Death. death. So the sentence of death is hanging on you. Not because of anything you have done, but because you are born by Adam. Mm. So the sentence of death is hanging on you. But do you know something? That death came upon one person. His name is Jesus Christ. He died on the cross of Calvary. And by his death, all your sins were taken away by him. He died and resurrected. If you can just believe that that sacrifice is for you, that the judgment that's supposed to become that's supposed to come on you was put upon him, then if you believe that, your salvation has come. The moment you believe that, you are saved. Not many people in Catholic know what I'm talking about now. They have not heard of it. One they hear is uh, Jesus, son of Mary, pray for us, and all those things. Jesus, son of Mary, pray for us. I, um, let's change clothes. Let us dance and cool, and all of those things. Most of them will go to hellfire, dancing around religion without the substance. When a man sees the gospel and gets saved, there's something just to him, sir. Salvation does not leave you the same way you are. Salvation leaves you with tasks for more of God. It pulls you away from whatever you are, who you are, who you are, so that you can come and serve God acceptably. Salvation is a spiritual thing. 
He that is born of the spirit is spirit, that is born of the flesh is flesh. If they are truly born again, that atmosphere will not be conducive. It will not be, that religious atmosphere will not be conducive. Something inside of you just designing a change. Do you know that, do you know that this man got born again right there? Martin Luther. Martin Luther got born again in Catholic Church. He said the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. He was one that saw it. Galatians chapter 3 verse 11. He saw it. He said, the just shall live by faith. Not by all this things that we are doing. Light candle. Light this. Bow to Mary. Bow to idols. All of this is what we are doing here. They are all nonsense. He read it from the Bible and said, the just shall live by faith, not by works. So when he saw it, he said, wait a minute. The just shall live by faith. He wrote 99 theses. Why Catholic Church is of the devil. And paste it on the wall, on the door. I ran away. And was declared wanted. The, the Pope wanted to get him and kill him. He ran away to England. And the King James welcomed him to England. And he said, Now you can translate the Bible from Latin, the Greek, to English for us. So the translators did that translation of the original text into English authored by King James authorized by King James I give you authority to translate that information because the guy ran there King James welcomed him he, King James was actually a convert of Martin Luther already his heart is condemning him yeah, yeah. condemning him and when your heart condemns her, God is greater than your heart. That's what the Bible is saying. He will condemn you more. But if your heart condemns you, you know, you have confidence. Another person can do that work and have confidence. And say, Madam, sit down, we we'll educate you. Mm. Another person will run a business and say, Madam, sit down, let me educate you that these are not part of moderation. Moderation is what God respects. Now, do you know that some people out of, um, they, are, they, they are dealing with fire most of the time. They lose their eyelashes. Mm. And they lose their beauty with it. Have you ever come close to fire before? You lose all your hair. <laughs> you just be see your hair, your body smelling hair. It's fire that is spoiling it. So most of these women, you see that their eyelashes are not as they have been there. Now they are better now because they are using gas. Those days of you I just stick. The eyelashes are gone. Now we have an answer to Isa. We can put eyelashes for you. Cosmetic ones. And to look like all those extravagant things is what they call um, Superfluous. Anything superfluous. Superfluity of nothingness. Extra. So, you do all of that and you are preaching the gospel. That's why I answered the question with Was Moses an Egyptian? Did you hear that before? You will hear when I preach it. So, because the way people look at you, would they read you as an Egyptian? I gave you one of the texts here. One of the texts here. The Bible says, Paul took Timothy and circumcised him. Did you read it? Mm. Yes. Paul yes, took yes, Timothy of the they were going to and circumcised him. Because Timothy was a son of a Greek, a Gentile. If mother is a Jewess, but the father a Gentile, Paul took him. In chapter 15, we have just said to that Gentiles should not be circumcised. They don't need to be circumcised. In chapter 15, Paul was one that argued it. He went to the headquarters and he said to it there. In chapter 16, Paul is the one that is circumcising Timothy now. Do you understand it? Yes, sir. Why? Because this journey we are taking, even though it is not necessary, mm. 
part of your salvation package to be circumcised. But for you, stand up, sir. In order to be useful, for when we are going to circumcise her. Do you see it? Yes, sir. Your circumcision is not because you are going to heaven of salvation, but because you are going to be useful to stand a place where we can use you to be suitable. So when you are talking, they say, Are you circumcised? They say, I am circumcised. <laughs> oh, hand will drop. Hand will drop. You see? So there are certain things we do intentionally, not because it's going to take us to heaven. But because of usefulness. Praise God. Hallelujah. Those days, myself and my wife sat together as coppers. Those days, we went out to preach to villagers. Deep village. And when we were preaching to them, a woman asked us a question, is it good for a Christian to be wearing a ring? Why is the sister that is following you wearing a ring? Really? <laughs> In the big village that you don't even think that they would know all those things. So we got back and, and regrouped and said, all of you, remove your earrings and then tie your hair. Go and get scarf and tie your hair. That was how we started going on. We were using scarf to tie hair and moving hair. Not because tying of hair and removing hair ring was part of righteousness. Do we get it? Yes, but because we want to win people, we came down to their level in order to win them. You can't be doing homiletics for them. I mean, hermeneutics for them. <laughs> you do hermeneutics for them until they go to hell. <laughs> so, oh foolish Galatians, having begun in the spirit, are you not made perfect in the flesh by the works you are doing? Oh, you think it's this work that will take you to heaven? No. It's not by works. Whoever has bewitched you have done evil. Have done evil. Sir, I noticed there is a connection between the promise and grace. There's a, con- there's a connection. Because the grace is the carrier of the promise. The grace is the carrier of the promise. You see, when you have grace, the promise is fulfilled in your life. When you don't have grace, you are cut off from the promise. Last question, sir. The law, the law prevents you from the promise. Sir, the um, two mythical things, Mm -hmm. I um, actually, when I read it, I I came up with that, the hopes, God made the promise and the promise. And the and the two oh, there are two things by which it's impossible for God to lie. If God makes a promise, it is immutable. When God makes a promise, that promise is immutable. Miss, it doesn't change. It's immutable. Now, when he now swear. God, 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 God. The covenant that brought us, the covenant that brought us, is the covenant that God swore to. He said, so that those of us that run unto safety might have consolation. So that we might have what? Consolation. That we have assurance that we are in safety. We are in safe hand. Because God spoke it not only by promise, back it up by an oath. These things are immutable. You see, but God is not a man. God is not a man, I should lie. Has he said it? Will he not do it? Has he, has he promised it? Will he not make it good? Now the Bible says, and God did unto Sarah as he has said. And he performed unto her, he visited Sarah as he has said, and did unto Sarah as he has promised. So, once he says it, by this time next year, time of life, according to the time of life, you will carry your baby. The Bible says he visited Sarah as he has said, 
and did unto her as he has, as he has promised. So God is not a man. Whenever he promises, he's going to. Now listen to me. When God told Abraham, now your children are going to be in captivity for 400 years. Abraham was dead and gone, buried. True or false? His children, Isaac was born. Isaac gave back to Isaac, Jacob. Jacob gave back to the children and went to, down to Egypt. And they were in captivity. When 400 years was about approaching, he raised a Moses. Without anybody reminding him, you don't have to remind God of the promise that he makes. Without anybody reminding him, he brought up the promise and raised Moses. When they came out of Egypt, they had spent 430 years. The extra 30 years was not caused by God, it was caused by Moses. Do you know why? Moses. Have I taught you before? All by the people. No, Moses. Moses. When, when, God, when God calls you and gives you an assignment, the vision is yet for an appointed time. So wait for it. It speaks at the end. So when Israel were in captivity now, Israel were in captivity 350 years. Are you following me? This was when Moses was born. When Israel were in captivity for 350 years. years. What was God's promise? So how many years are remaining now? 50. God expected that by the time Moses is 50, I will call him. Are you getting it? And I will speak to him and he will bring the people out. But when Moses was 40, he called himself. (laughs) Within having 10 years remaining. So he called himself when he was full 40 years. So now, I'm mature. I've been training in Pharaoh's house. He went, let me go and visit my people. So when he went to visit the people, he now saw them oppressing themselves. And the Egyptian beating, I mean oppressing, he just gave them one, one heavy blow. The Egyptian died. And he buried him under. And the Israelites ran away. Hey! Another day, an Israelite was fighting with an Israelite. And Moses came and said, What? Are you not brethren? Why are you fighting yourselves? He doesn't like all this oppression. Why are you fighting yourself? What's the meaning of this? The one who was oppressing the other one. So what is your own? Do you want to kill me the way you killed the other day? Eh? The man I thought I helped, who's supposed to keep quiet, has spread it all over Egypt. I thought it was a secret. When Moses knew that it was not a secret, it took off because the matter was soon get to Pharaoh. It took off. The man that God was preparing to use when the people were about to I mean, to reach 400 years, the man had taken off. And when he took off at the age of 40, God came and called him 40 years after. So, 40 years after, Israel were in captivity for 390 when Moses was 40 years old. So, 40 years after was when Moses eventually agreed to come. So, Israel eventually left Egypt for 30 years. With 30 years extra that Moses spent in Midian. Moses would have waited. He wouldn't have killed that Egyptian. He would have gone to God and said, God, now you have trained me. What do you want me to do about this, my people? Then they would begin to use these 10 years to groom him on how to go about it. But he took laws into his hand, called himself into the ministry, and then the he laid a whole nation. The Israelites, they, they, they were in Egypt for 350 years. 
before Moses was born. Before Moses was born. When Moses was born, Herod that does not know, I mean Pharaoh, and does not know uh, Joseph was raised. And this man was, was already maltreating them. The Bible said, at this time, Moses was born. The same time the Herod was maltreating, I mean Pharaoh was maltreating them, Moses was born. And God raised him up to maltreat them because the time of living has come. In childbirth, the child in the womb is eating the food from the mother. True or false? True. That child is not chewing anything. He's not swallowing any water. He's not eating whatever. He's not eating. He's directly feeding from the mother. He's not stressing himself. Where am I going to, am I going to get food? He's not crying for food. The food is coming to him directly. He's used to that environment no stress mm. but when it is time to come out god makes that same womb unbearable for the child mm. so much so that the child himself is looking out for a way to come out. come out so what happens you see pain mm. what what will god do god will break the water mm. when god breaks the water he is already giving the environment of the child unbearable. Hmm. Are you with me? Yes, sir. When God breaks the water, God is announcing to the child, your time in this place is over. Hmm. Let me not pray. Let me not pray. The water is broken. It is time to come out. It's time to come out. It's time to come out. The water is broken. The bed pants are started. The pain is always heavy. The Bible says the people evil and treated our, our, our people. They subjected our people to heavy punishment. Why? Because the time to come out of that place has come. The time to be delivered. How did you, what did God do? He delivered them. Isn't it? Yes, sir. He delivered them. Through what? The Red Sea. Have you seen the woman given by before? Have you seen the woman given by before? Yes, sir. The Red Sea comes out of her. And the child comes out of a divided Red Sea. Mm. Wow. So their stay for 4 30 years was actually caused by Moses. The child is supposed to be in, in that place for 9 months. If it's more than 9 months, it's, there's an EDD day, the expected day. So, before, when a child is conceived, okay, the date of birth have been decided. But, you know, it can be two weeks before or two weeks after. Now, when God says it's 400, it became 30 years after, after delivery date. So, if a child comes after the expected date of delivery, EDD, expected date of delivery, if the child comes after, it's because of certain conditions. If it comes earlier, it's also because of certain conditions. Yes, sir. The condition is dependent on the leadership. The leadership. Do you know that you can choose your EDD by what they call inducing? Say, I'm tired of having this child inside this place. You give the child pitocin, dose, good one, good dose of pitocin. And then the woman will have heavy pain and the water will burst and run out with pitocin. But the world is very critical. The woman can lose her life. Because it's not a natural order. Mm -hmm. It's an inducement. Inducing. Yes, when you induce your bed, bed, bed pank, you push the baby out. So sometimes when a woman cannot, cannot push, you induce the woman. So the 
this pitocin will make the muscles of the womb to be moving, to be rejecting the child. But it's painful. The woman will be crying. So, God didn't want to use inducing. He wanted the natural cause. So he, want, he went to media and trained the person that he was going to use for 40 years. And after the man trained for 40 years, he brought him back. So he did his BSc here, <laughs> and he did his master's here. <laughs> so when he, come, when he came a master, God brought him back. At this point, Moses was eager. Send me, send me. Let me go and deal with these people. Send me. But at this place, Moses was like, I'm not, I can't even speak. I can't speak. When you get to the point where you say, I can't speak, I can't do it, God decided to use you. But as long as you are saying, I have the muscle, I can do it, as long as you go and say, I can't, use, I can't use you now. Peter was not usable until he failed before a little girl that said, you are part of them. He rejected Jesus. He denied Jesus Christ. So when he failed, that was when God said, now you are ready. Can we now talk? Mm 